One more time, we're here again on your television and on your social media handles. This is AFCON Today. My name is Nathaniel Atwan. I'm glad to welcome you to the show. It's been a very, very interesting set of games in the group stage of the competition. And now, what they always say is that the boys have been separated from those who identify as men in the competition. Unfortunately, the story is that Ghana uh, would have to identify with the session that are referred to as the boys. What has gone wrong? What are the situations? Loads and loads of, uh, you know, um, developments coming in. And of course, we're looking ahead as well to the big games of the weekend. One of them being a cracker. Do the defending champions cause one more time a very big upset which will, uh, as they describe, and the enthusiasm at home in the competition, or will the host step up to the game like they did in 1992 and, of course, in the year 2015? All of these will be discussed here on AFCON today, as we always do, and I'm glad to have your company here. Uh, we'll be picking them one after the other like we always do, and we'll be breaking them down as we always do as well. It's the second round of the competition. Who stays? Who goes? Big question indeed. And of course, little bits with Ghana and the developments that have happened so far, including uh, the firing of the head coach, Chris Hewton. Uh, Cote d'Ivoire have also bid farewell. Maybe they took a decision a little too early because they still find themselves here, and there's a big window of opportunity. All of these are here over this one-hour package. Welcome to the show. My name is Nathaniel Atta once again. Very shortly, my guests will be seated, and I'm here back by the rest of the Joy Sports team. Remember, we're live on Joy News and on Joy Prime. Well, put your hands in the air. That line by, uh, you know, by uh, that uh, legendary set of musicians from different parts of the African continent. You do remember Magic System, don't you? We all do remember those hit songs from yesteryear. Well, let's now get down to the business. Of course, Yemi Alade, uh, you know, her secret admirer is not here in the studio yet, but let's talk about that later on. Samia Mwesi is here with me in the studio, and Stone is also here. Gentlemen, good to have you here. Good to see you. Thanks so much, Cher. Ah, so much has happened in the last, what, yeah. two or three days? So much has happened. Two days? Well, two days, maybe. Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to start off with the goals. The goals that have made the difference in this competition. Uh, the goals that some so badly would have craved to have them push a little notch higher uh, on the standings to keep them in the competition. Well, uh, there are some stories that are those of the past and those of Ghana, those of the likes of Algeria who won the last two editions of the competition. But now we have a new set and we will see them do battle. Uh, one of the big uh, surprise elements, obviously, is Cape Verde, who sure have shown massive strength in this group stage of the competition. Let's begin with the goals. And uh, you uh, will tell me what your picks are for, you know, for the competition. So there we go. Uh, this belter by Pina. I mean, it, it was a 30-yarder. Well, I don't know about you, but um, I would pick the curler from Lamine Kamara. I mean, aesthetically, it was there. And of course, there was a bit of a degree of difficulty because you had to bend it into the top corner of the goal. Secondly, I think Kudus, in as much as aesthetically there are more beautiful goals, it looked very simple to score. He had a sea of legs around him. Um, you know, so well, those are my picks. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about you. My, my, my number one is Kudus. Okay, tell me why. First of all, he's going up against Egypt. That's number one. Mm. Uh, you're going up against one of the best defense in Africa, mm. on the African continent. And then he receives the ball. There is a player behind him that you need to, that strength, like it just bounces off him, you know, because of the strength of Kudus. Mm. And then there are a sea of Egyptians, about two, three players that are all around him. These two slide here, this one from this side, and he still has the nimbleness of mind to put it in that corner. No. To me, that goal, you know, the whole beautiful goals, you know, from this corner, <laughs> from that corner, from this corner. But if we're talking about technicality, yeah. presence of mind, uh, strength, you know, abilities just to be, you know, to just have that inspiration and just to be technical, uh, then it has to be kudos. I, I'm, I'm picking kudos as number one. Okay. Uh, Sami, what about you? I mean, it, it's unfortunate, yeah. Kudu's goal is very great for me, but I think that Lamina has, 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 has also surprised me because I'm looking at it from this angle. A very young lad comes into this team, making his debuts, and just call that belter. 
And so, a very great goal. You, you could also make a case for, for, for Kudus, just like what Stone is saying. But I think that I'm looking at it from this young lad from down the 20, comes in, joined the team, had a bit of familiarity with them. And so, he coming in, nobody even thought that he's going to even go straight into the team, make the starting 11 and even score at that, at, that, at that situation. But you look at how he scored, I think that great goal by Austin that for me. Mm, great goal indeed. Well, so the goals have made the difference. And, and another thing as well, um, have these goals and their quality lived up to the expectation for you? Because you see, I mean, this is our, our flagship brand when it comes to showcasing our football to the rest of the world. Have they lived up to it? I mean, because you're putting this on the same scale as the Euros yeah. and, you know, the uh, Copa America and all of that. But I'm surprised that Baby's free kick didn't make the top 10, honestly. Uh, that, that, that caught to me too. Because I think that that goal, the precision, and you look at distance closer to the center, center line, and then he was able to look at the top spot of the goal post. I think that he should, he should be in the top 10. But, I mean, back to the question that you asked. I think that that's the goal that has, I mean, that, that has come in so far, the top 10 goals that has been rated. And so, you, can, you, you can't really, I mean, disagree. Too much. Yeah, too much, because mm. these are the goals that have been produced. You can't really do anything about it mm. than to go with it. And so, yeah, I think the quality of goals, yeah, perhaps it's there, but we not top, top notch. But I think, I mean, they are goals, and you can't really challenge it. Mm. What about you, so? Personally, I, I think that it is representing the African brand well. Okay. Because... We're not just looking at the Salas, the Kudos, or Simen. Look, or Simen is not here. The top 10. Yeah. He's not. He's not here. Simon so Salah. Sal Sal Salah is not here. I mean, Mane is not here. So these are the, the big names, and they are not here. So what this shows you is that when you come to the Afcon, young stars can rise up, can show immense talent and this is the, the way we do it at the AFCON it's not just the big names in Europe or the big names in this particular place or the person that you know you know online or whatever when you come to the AFCON we're going to show you new players we're going to show you young players young talent that you might not have heard of that can do something that will surprise you and and that's what the, the African brand is it, it is it is it is something that is inspiration something that is surprising you'll be surprised you'll be like who is this yeah. and then all of a sudden you have you know someone like that's a right back that was a right back before and then now he's the highest goal scorer at the <laughs> AFCON so you know the AFCON is just is very is a surprising thing but it just brings out names that you know before you might not have known about them and everything and then all of a sudden, the, the person is in the starting lineup, you, you look like Senegal, and then you look at this guy, you know, he, was, he used to play in the third division or he's somewhere, you know, just there. And then all of a sudden, he's scoring from like 30 yards, and then he's the one carrying his nation to the next, uh, to the knockout phase and all this kind of stuff. So I think it's representing the African brand well, putting us out there that we're not just about the big names and the names that play in Europe, we're about young talents, bringing out people from the grassroots, developing African football, and just... Uh, putting down there. Well, um, interesting stuff there. In a bit, we're also going to talk about those who have been adjudged the best in the group stage of the competition or the first stage of the competition. Uh, I'm not sure you have any surprises. Uh, Lamin Kamara, uh, you know, emerging the best player so far. And coach Aliu Sise, emerging the coach uh, so far, the best coach so far. Well, Aliu Sise, I always uh, bask in a story with pride because he's come a long way. I mean, he's going into his ninth year and what a better time to be around a national team that you've captained before. Yeah, that's true. And I think that is one, also, um, that is one thing that has to do with consistency. Mm. We saw that with Hassan Shiata when he was with the Egyptian national team. Because of consistency, you saw how the glory that he was able to amass. And so for me, I'm not much surprised. And I think credit to the, I mean, the Senegalese FA as well for the belief and the support. I'm not sure that when he started, he had it all rosy. I think that he encounters some challenging times, but because they believed in him, they thought that, listen, regardless of whatever is going to happen, this is the right guy. And so they gave him the back and they gave him the support. And so I'm not surprised that he has been able to make it three out of three. He's been, I mean, he's won the manager of the first round or the group phase. And so this is what comes with consistency and to believe, regardless what the audience are going to say, this is the right man. Let's give him the, uh, the room to operate. And because they did that, look at that. I mean, the, I mean, the, the, the glory that he's been able to, I mean, uh, to bring in so far. And so I will not be much surprised, even if he's able to lead this side throughout the final and even defend the title. Because the way they've played throughout the group phase, they look very strong. And I think that any team that is, I mean, that, that will come up against Senegal might have something in mind that how to even stop them. Because any other player that comes from the bench is able to make an impact. 
And that is one, one key thing that if we are going into a tournament and you're going to win, that is what you have to do. You need to get a proper in-depth. And so when even the starting 11 have been struggling, anyone who comes from the, of the bench will be able to make that impact. So, so far, what I mean, at least is our stand, you can't really challenge it. And for me, I think that I'm not surprised. Well, uh, the dreadlocks is doing some magic. Another man who's wearing dreadlocks is uh, Rigobert Song Bahanang. Now, Rigobert Song knows what it means to lift the Africa Cup of Nations. He knows what it means to lead your country to the FIFA World Cup. Now, he finds himself in the saddle coaching. It's been a very, very difficult one. Of course, it goes into his CV as well as having beaten Brazil at the World Cup, but it didn't help them to move further uh, at the FIFA World Cup. So, you're looking at the story of... Uh, you know, the, the, how tough it's been going in these early stages for Rigobert Song as head coach of Cameroon and how um, Samuel Eto is having to keep faith with him, you know, in very, very difficult circumstances. And you're comparing that story to how, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, Cissé also started very, very rough. Yeah. And yet the people kept faith with him. Yeah. Do you see a similar story happening with, with him? You know, sometimes when I look at Rugoba Song, I might have my doubts. But, you know, one thing he did that really, you know, made me to, to really calm down was the fact that in the second match, uh, sorry, in the, in the third match, he put Onana on the bench which was very important. Because when, you, when somebody can, and we spoke about this many times, when someone can disrespect their country in that, in that manner, then he needs to be put on the bench. Yeah. And we saw the importance of that match for Cameroon and the way they came with her. Now, Cameroon might not have stars, in quotes. I mean, but, the stars we've always yeah, known the them star, for. Yeah. You know, the Samuel Eto's, the, mm. the Patrick Mboma, all those, they, they might not have all those, all those stars, but they have hearts. You cannot be coming to play against Cameroon and just come casually. They are going to run you out of town. That is Cameroon for you. And so I see this man as somebody that, if given the right backing, might be able to do well. And I'm saying might. is a 50-50 thing. Because, we because I'm, I'm also looking yeah. at the scenario <laughs> if they hadn't uh, done what they did in the third game and, yeah. and they... They fizzled, fizzled out. But, but, I'm sure by now he would have been a cancer. Yeah, because if, if he lost that game, definitely, or he drew, then we're, we're singing a, 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 another song. It's different. But the, the thing is this. He was able to deliver a win. Okay? And, 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 and we have to look at it from that perspective. He has been able to make the tough, tough decisions. And you have to look at it that he doesn't have his talisman. He doesn't have the best player that Cameroon has right now. He doesn't have him on the pitch. Vincent Abubakar plays for Cameroon this group stage is different. Maybe they win all their games. Maybe, maybe they, win, they lose one. Maybe they win two. Maybe they get six points. Because Abubakar can change the game by himself. We've seen him many times. We've seen him many times. And that's why he's my favorite AFCON player. We've seen him many times. Cameroon is down. Just all balls to Abubakar. Don't worry. Something is going to happen. And, and that is what... And, and now he's... We've heard that he's back. Yeah. We don't know where he's going to start. I think maybe he's going to start from the bench, um, 60 minutes, 70 minutes, bring him back, bring him on, and all this kind of. I don't know how fit he is, but is Abubakar 80 percent fit is enough? But what I'm saying is this. I mean, we saw some similar with uh, Kudus. Yes, yeah, Kudus, Kudus, Kudus was not fit. Yeah, I came on the pitch yeah. two goals. That, that that's that's the kind of player uh, Abubakar can be at the Afcon. He, he is the Afcon guy. When you, when you talk about you know when you talk about uh, international footballers, you, you talk about Pele and all. When you talk about Afcon, you talk about Abubakar. In the past couple of like yeah. like six years or so, you talk about Abubakar because he knows what to do. He knows how to do it. He knows when to do it. He's that guy. He's that man. So. I'm keeping faith with him for now and seeing what he does against Nigeria. And, and if, now, the, the, the question is not if he wins or loses. Now, that, that, because, because if you look at the names in terms of paper, Nigeria has the names. Mm. Cameroon has Abubakar and, you know, Anguissa, you know, and you look at it like that. So if you look at it the, on paper, now, if, if he pulls up the win, against Nigeria, then no matter what happens the competition, you keep him. Mm. You keep him beyond the competition, no matter what happens. Now, if he loses against Nigeria, and then it, the question now becomes, how did he lose against Nigeria? What, what kind of loss was, was, it? was it? Was it a humiliating loss? Was it like a 4 new loss? Was it like a loss of, oh, just, 
just beat us like that. What kind of loss was, was it? And, and then you have to look critically at it. That, and and I, I know Samaleto is very brilliant. You know, there were videos of him, you know, talking with the Cameroonian players, you know, and really encouraging them. And I think, you know, when you have some, a legend like, like Eto that's done it everywhere, or, you know, one time top three best player in the world and all those kind of stuff, then you have to respect what he has to say. And if he is backing this uh, uh, Rugabek song, then Rugabek song has something to offer. I mean, I, I can't say I know better than Samuel Eto. Who am I? Uh, Eto has played the game at the highest level. Eto, he, he's, he's, he's intelligent. You listen to him and he's talk. He's very intelligent. He's an astute learner of the game. So if Eto is backing him, then I'm backing him. To, to the Nigeria match and I see what happens. But I, I'm telling you right now, uh, the way he was able to pull off the win, the substitutions he made mm. that brought out everything and all this kind of stuff, I'm backing for now. But, 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 just two things. I think yeah, sure. brilliant submission from Stone, but I'm looking at it from, from these two angles. That you look at the build-up to this appointment. I mean, the, the, the narrative was that they appointed him because he's a friend of Eto, and so he just bring him in, he settled him down. <laughs> yeah. The other thing has to do with since the 2022 FIFA World Cup in Qatar, he brilliant. He was there, beat Brazil. What next? Nothing. You compare it to Ali UCC, you could see a bit of massive improvement. Mm -hmm. Look at Lamin Kamara from the U20, 17, 20, straight to this side. Yes. You look at this Cameroonian side. Seems like no improvement. And for me, I mean, he was talking about he's keeping, I mean, he's keeping faith in him for now, but kind of like, seems like he goes, he's going to be sacked if he should lose against Nigeria. And what kind of defeat, what a, was it, I mean, a close one? Was it a humiliating one? Every defeat is defeat. You can't justify it. Okay. And so, going into the, I mean, the game against Nigeria, it's very, very key for him. And I'm thinking that for him to keep his job, already he's under pressure. For him to keep his job, he has no option but to beat Nigeria. I think that he got lucky like against Guinea. Because look at how he won, very scrappy one, but he's able to go through. Now you come up against a position who also understanding how to play the Afcon in the name of Nigeria. Yes, Nigeria, I mean, Cameroon have been there before. They've dominated the continent before. Now they have a key man. Abubakar comes into the squad, makes them a bit solid going into, into the game. But despite how, I mean, Nigeria struggled throughout the, I mean, the group phase, I think that they'll be able to find a way to beat this Cameroon. Because this Cameroon, I think they are not good enough, like, how do you, I mean, when they hosted the Afcon in 2021. And so for me, I think that at least you say he's under pressure already and how he came to office, all these things. And if he should lose against Nigeria, I think you expect him to be fired. Well, one of my favorite African players of all time, my good friend, Rigobert Song. Uh, you know, he's the one. <laughs> he's the man. In a few moments as well, we'll be going through that top 11 that has been put together. Um, after the first phase of the competition. But let's get on Zoom and have a conversation with uh, Coach Osman Seydou. Coach Osman Seydou is, um, you know, a, a regular pundit here on Joy Sports and, of course, uh, has massive thoughts as we go into the second phase of the competition. All right, Coach Osman, um, I realize you are get, trying to travel out of Accra now. Uh, thanks for making the time to be with us. Coach, we've had... Um, we've had... Brilliant games played in the uh, first half of this competition. Personally, how would you describe the experience so far? Um, you know, the surprises and all the shocks that we've seen. Thank you very much, Nathaniel, for this opportunity. It's been thrilling. It's been exciting. Um, memories are being created every single day um, to ensure that we, we are... We are watching football and enjoying football as well. I, I would like to say that um, it is very important to note that this has been a very exciting time that we are all experiencing um, football that we want and football that's so interesting. And we all see what's happening. I would not be surprised if one of the smaller teams pick up the, the cup um, for this particular outcome. Mm. Well, um, on, on that score, we would definitely want to talk about uh, Kivert. What do you feel Kivert have done right? I mean, you are a technical person. What do you feel they've done right from uh, the games you've seen them play so far? Well, I watched them against Ghana, and, and trust me, um, I was not surprised they were able to beat Ghana. And they were following the rules of the game. They understood that they are underdogs. They understood that the game is not over until it's over. 
They were following the principles of defense. They were playing like a team. They organized well. They were pressing very well. And they, they were at it when they get opportunity at goal. I want to say that it's more of a complete team than that of Ghana. And they are very determined. You could see out of their results, they had seven points um, out of the um, um, nine points to, to be taken. So for me, um, I think it, it's, looks, it's becoming more of a complete team um, from right from the technical department to the playing body and then to the management body of, of, the, of, of Cape Verde. So I would not be surprised if they go to the extent of I mean, playing final at this particular tournament. Well, some of the big boys have fizzled out. Ghana has fizzled out. And now, I mean, recently, uh, Andre Ayu uh, is quoted to have saying that we are not uh, favorites anymore or we, are not, we don't have that big boy tag anymore. And it's for very obvious reasons. Um, between Niger uh, you know, Algeria and Ghana, which one was more surprising for you? I think Ghana was more surprising for me because... And trust me, we have everything it takes to qualify, at least to the next stage. If you look at the caliber of players we have and the experience those players have and their, the teams they are playing, with all this European experience and all the standard and the Liga experience, I do not expect us to get out of this tournament with only two and, 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 and with only a point and two points. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit, I have to say, I'm a bit disappointed. Um, but hey, let's move on. They have something to do. They should just qualify for the World Cup and Ghanaians would love them again. It, it happens in football. And I'm so surprised of that of Ghana and Algeria because I believe in everything about Ghana. I had a lot of belief in the technical team. I have believed in the players. Kudus alone is like three players to manage at a time. Um, we are talking about Jordan Ayu. We are talking about and um, all the big, big shots in the team, and with all their experience, I did not expect um, Ghana to be out of the tournament at the group stage. It's, it's, it's not something we should be happy about, and we cannot be happy about it. So I'm very, very um, disappointed in, 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 in our performance um, to that extent. But mm. hey, um, let's wait and listen. Maybe there is some reasons beyond tactical reasons, and normally, these things will come out when they come out of the tournament. But having said all this, I strongly believe that um, it's a tournament that we could have done better, and it's gone. There is nothing we can do about it. We just have to come home, think about our qualifiers, and see how best we can we can we can win those matches to bring back the love to Ghanaians. Uh, coach, um, just before you go catch your flight, um, you know you, you've mentioned the possible surprise package that maybe. Uh, a team that we do not associate with picking trophies will do that this term. Away from that as well, in the instance that that doesn't happen, I mean, you have big fixtures coming up, you know, a Nigeria and a Cameroon, and then you have Senegal going up against the host Cote d'Ivoire. These are top liners for the weekend. For you, who else do you see coming out of this and heading towards the ultimate from what you've seen so far? Apart from the big teams, I mean, don't be surprised if any Cote d'Ivoire gets to final because, well, their first match was not a bad match. Um, they lost by 4 0, but they've qualified. Let's see how it goes. But okay. um, Nigeria and um, Cameroon is going to be a cracker. Um, like your panelists were saying, um, Song has a lot to do. He either wins this match or, or forget it. Or forget it. Um, but um, when it comes to Nigeria, I think they also have something to show. Um, Osime would like to prove a point, and I, I, I think it's going to be a cracker, but I'll go in for Nigeria to win that particular match. Senegal are not living up to expectation the way I want them to play. However, I, I'm still keeping an eye on them. They are also potential winners of this particular um, tournament. But Kivet should not be ruled out as well. And um, I think those are the teams that are likely to win this particular tournament. Coach, we're very grateful to you and uh, safe flight. We'll catch up when you get back to Accra. Thank you very much, Natalia. God bless you. God Bye. bless you too. So, uh, Coach Osman Seydou there with uh, his analysis. He's been talking about the possibility of having, you know, a smaller team, as we always tag them, uh, to, to emerge from this.
Now, um, let's tackle two quick things before we get into the main preview for uh, the big games to expect, you know, for the, the round of 16 in the weekend. Now, there is the element of, um, you know, the young player. Um, you know, I'm talking about Senegal's youthful player. We've been talking about him for a bit. And the fact that he's been picked as a player off the first round is a big feather in his cap as a youngster. And that takes us back to 2009, when Ghana also had a crop of youngsters who had gone to win the Under-20 World Cup. Um, what else do you see him doing going further into this court, especially as he's received an accolade such as this? I think, I think it's, it's a serve as a huge motivation. Mm. Just like what I was earlier, I mean, I earlier on said, mm. this is a young lad, we've seen about under 17, 20. I think he won the best player under 17 and 20 as well. Mm. And then he comes here in the first round, picks, the, I mean, the, uh, the best player for the first round. I think it's going to serve as a huge motivation for him. But... So not, I think that for me, I'm not surprised because I had the opportunity to read how the Senegalese are trying to do their football. They got upon a time, just like the situation Ghana find itself, they, they, took, they, they paused and then tried to settle down and ask themselves, well, what can we do to I mean, revive the ball, I mean, to, to revive the game? And it's a fantastic piece that I read. I mean, how they took their time that this is how we're going to go. They bring in people that are qualified enough to help to revive the game. And so I'm not much surprised to see Kamara, 17-20, now here, win the best player. And I think it's fantastic because what they are doing is very much simple. If you go to the 17, you perform, you migrate to the 20. You go to the 20, you perform, you migrate to the main team, maybe the 23 or something like that. But it looked like, just like what you said, I think that Kamara is like the next big thing for African football because mm. hardly will you see a young lad go to an 20 tournament, perform and come straight to the main team, and then hits the ground running. It's reminding me of Andrea Ayew. Yeah. When the, and the Ghana and the 20 won the U20, U20 tournament, went to the World Cup, beat, I mean, Brazil. And it, I mean, Andrea Ayew came to the Black Stars, hits his ground running. We saw him at the AFCON and then the um, FIFA World Cup in South Africa. And so for me, I'm not much surprised because what Senegal are doing, everything they are, that they are doing there, there is... It seems like the philosophy and how they are trying to do their football is working perfectly for them. And so, for me, I'm not much surprised. I think that he's a very talented player, fantastic player. And look at the goals that he, he scored, the two goals that he scored. Very, very, and just like, that, that's why all those two goals are in, in, in the top ten. And so, for me, going forward, I think that it's going to serve as a huge motivation. And I think that the players around him are also going to motivate him, I mean, to do more for, for, for Senegal as well. So the Bexian player of the group stage, Lamine Kamara of Senegal there, making his name here and making a big impression here as well. Lamine Kamara, mind you, is part of the top 11 who have been selected from the group stage as well. We're going to go through that and, uh, you know, my panelists here are going to tell me uh, what they make of these players as well. But, you know, while we're talking about Kam uh, Kamara, while Sami was talking about Kamara, I'm just thinking about uh, the all the agents who and the scouts who are watching this tournament, who've flown into Côte d'Ivoire and are making calls and wanting to do business. We're approaching the summer transfer window gradually. Ask now. Ask now need to make a call. <laughs> ask now. Ask now. To win the league. To win the league. To win the league. Make a call. Make a call. So there we go. Um, um, Jelson Dalla of, uh, of Angola is in here. Um, the only Angolan player now. Emilio Insue of Equatorial Guinea is here. Emilio Insue has been very key in getting them this far. Do remember that um, Equatorial Guinea had issues with discussing bonuses with their very flashy vice president who's still, you know, uh, living on <laughs> the high ground and smelling the golden roses at the tournament. And also Ismail Assa. Now, uh, there are three Senegalese players in here. So Ismail Assa, Lamine Kamara, whom we've spoken about already, and Khalidou Koulibaly, very obviously. Now, Morocco, Morocco have four. And that is, uh, that doesn't come as a surprise because they came in as the highest rated team. I don't agree that they should have four. Um, okay, so who do you believe shouldn't be here? So is it Ashraf Hakimi? Is it Amrabat? Is it, um, you know, Azadeen Wani? Or uh, Naif Agored? Well, I'll remove Naif because where is, where's Calvin Bassi? Mm. Where's, where's Calvin Bassi? Are you being biased? I, I'm not being biased. That, that's the reality of life. Calvin Bassi has been one of the most solid defenders at this AFCON. For him not to be here is a travesty, is a, is a disgrace. Mm. He should be here. So the, the, the back four is incomplete without Calvin Bassi. Calvin Bassi should be in this back four. Remove somebody, but put him here. Because I believe that if you look at the Nigerian defense and look at how they played against Cote d'Ivoire and look at how they played against Equatorial Guinea, it's Equatorial Guinea that gave Cote d'Ivoire 4 0. 
Calvin Bassi, look at what he did against Cote Look at what he did in the last month. Look at what he did. He should be here. So I believe that this back four is incomplete. One of them should be out. Calvin Bassi should okay. be here. So for you, uh, Nayef Agued should not be here. Should not be here. Um, Arthur Masakao is also uh, Masuaku, sorry. He was incredible. Yeah. He yeah. was incredible. He's been incredible. So Emilio Insue is supported by Yesu Zawono. I don't and agree with that goalkeeping position. Okay. Who would you put here? I'm going to put the Cape Verdean uh, goalkeeper right there. Okay. Because if you look at um, uh, Owono, Owono, Owono had a great first game. Second game, he dipped. And then the, the third game was a, a little bit average. Now, uh, you look at the Cape Verdean goalkeeper, had three great games. It was, it was, he didn't have any bad game. So, you know, <coughs> Owono, the, the, the hype is that, oh, he went up against Nigeria and all seamen and all those stuff. And then, you know, he was able to hold his ground and all this stuff. Like that. And I understand it. He had a, a 8.4 rating or so against Nigeria in the first game or something like that. But after that, you know, he, he was atrocious at, at some points during the, during the, the, the group stage. And you, you had uh, Emilio Insue who had to rescue him many times because of the goals that were being scored and everything like that. I mean, so I'm going to look at it and say he shouldn't be he shouldn't be here the Kevadian goalkeeper should be the person that should be here uh, personally that's what I'm, I'm going to put the Kevadian goalkeeper I'm going to put Calvin Bassi both of them should be here in this all right uh, so uh, Stone disagrees I don't know what you also think out there uh, in goalkeeping is Jesus Owono of Equatorial Guinea uh, he is uh, one of two players from Equatorial Guinea who are in this uh, top 11 Ashraf Hakimi is here um, you know, this, this defensive quartet is made off of uh, Ashraf Hakimi, Khalidu Kulibali, uh, the Senegalese captain, and um, Nayef Agued, as well as um, Arthur Maswaku of DR Congo. Now, um, you also do not find a Kudus Mohammed who also picked up a player of the match uh, award, you know, when he, when he played yeah. uh, two times. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, um, you know, in, in, in midfield, you've got the trio of Lamin Kamara, uh, of course, in the attacking midfield position, as a Dean uh, Unani as well, and then Sofian Amrabat in the centre of the midfield, uh, you know, playing uh, a dual role and uh, backing from the uh, defensive midfield uh, position. So th there we have it there. And then on the front three is uh, Ismail Assar of Senegal, Emilio Insue of uh, Equatorial Guinea, and Jelson Dalla. So these are the players. These are uh, the top eleven uh, players so far. Well. Probably when we get past the round of 16, we're going to get another rating as well. But it's time to get into the fixtures for the weekend. And there are some top liners, there are some that sure are going to draw massive millions of eyeballs, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, you know at the weekend. Let's begin with Namibia and Angola. Namibia have creeped in quietly yep. in this tournament. Yep, yep, yep. And, that, and that's nice, honestly. And I think I'm, I must say this. When they came to Ghana here, I had opportunity. I was at the airport and I met them, myself, Tofik, and some other media guys. And I think I had a very brief chat with Colin Benjamin. And I must say that. I mean, he, 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 he says something. At this point, or disagrees with you, because he is one who's been very strong on the Namibian story <laughs> so far. Angola is going out. It's, it's pretty much straightforward. I mean, okay. if, you look, if you watch Angola, it is as straightforward as possible. It's ABC. One plus one equal two. It's simple. Angola have the weaknesses that are Namibian's strengths. Angola, you want to beat Angola, you counter them. Their left back, right back always go up for attack. And then they don't track back. They are not, not that fast like Nigerians, you know, Ola Aina to track back. They don't, they don't have that kind of speed. And Namibia have the speed of lightning in terms of counter-attack. It's like Cape Verde when they're attacking. So we're going to have a... Let's talk about the next big one, the very big one. Uh, this is, you know, uh, the semblance of a final. Now, this one, Nigeria versus Cameroon. Um, it was something else. Uh, do, you, do you have any memories from that final that was played in Nigeria when uh, Ghana and Nigeria hosted? I just have uh, memories of missed penalties. <laughs> That's all. Missed penalties were just going up, just going everywhere. <laughs> like, I, I'm looking at it, like, what missed penalties? Because I, I wasn't, I was very young at that point. But I went, I rewatched some clips and everything. I mean, come on now. Right? The amount of penalties that we missed that day, come on, we could build a house with it. Yeah. We just, you know, and, 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 you know, we, we spoke about Rigobert's song earlier, and now it places all of this in context because he... He, um, he missed a penalty, didn't he? Rigobert Song on the day missed a penalty before eventually Cameroon recovered to uh, do the magic. But then, I mean, he's been there before. He's seen 
uh, this fixture at the highest point, yeah. which is the final, the moment before picking the trophy. And I'm imagining what he'll be telling uh, the boys, especially as they go in as the side that is slightly weaker in terms of form. Yeah, I think that he's going to tell them exactly what to do because it's just like what he's been there before and he saw it and he's, they've conquered the Nigerians. But I think that he, he's going to go back to memory later and to tell this guy how they were, those guys how they were able to do it. But then again, I... Nigeria really didn't start a tournament, but I think as the tournament progresses, they've they have also been able to warm themselves into the tournament. But I think that Cameroon, listen, not I, you, you watch them against the, I mean, Agini, and I was not convinced at all. I think that they were lucky. The third goal of game. Uh, at the group stage. That's <laughs> I'm telling you, like a lot of people were like, oh, I play Cote d'Ivoire, going to be destroyed and everything. Now that we've qualified, and the match is not on a weekday. It's on the weekend. See, first of all, in the morning, everybody does their chores, everything like that. The whole place is going to be bubbly. You understand what I'm saying? Forget about um, any other thing. The malls, the places that they have TVs, public TVs, all this kind of stuff, the shops, uh, the, the, the places that people can gather to watch TV. You know, because people can come to their house and watch TV. I mean, some people are going to invite their friends over, have drinks, all this kind of stuff ready for the match. Then some people are going to... Now, in some estates that you expect to be, you know, peaceful and quiet, and, quiet. And, and tranquility, and sorry for you that day. Because huh. tomorrow, once we win, because we're going to win, once we win and they score, because we are going to have Osimen and, and senior man Kelechi, because Kelechi has not, he has not, he has not really, he has not really done anything. But tomorrow, he's going to, I'm sure the coach is keeping him, you know, the way they are warming up uh, Wobaka for Cameroon, we are warming Kelechi for Cameroon too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so it's all those uh, estates where there, there's quietness and there's, everybody's pristine and, and, you know, Mr. This and Dr. This and Professor This and, you know, CEO of Chief this, this and this Chief This. <laughs> Trust me. When Nigeria scores, everything, every accolade you have is thrown into the bush. You're going to see, go, the, the, the noise is going to be everywhere. It's going to be, it's going to be chaotic. Mm. Now, if we win, or when we win, if it's not, when we win, there's going to be a party till morning. And then, not only that, they, they get prepared, they go to church, and then, the, the Thanksgiving is on the is at the highest level. You can imagine, I mean, you can imagine you're a pastor and Nigeria has won and people are coming to church. Uh, the offer tree will be very good. <laughs> oh, bro. <laughs> All right, so Stone is giving us a graphic feel of what it will be like. And greetings to all of our friends who are also watching us from uh, all the states, different states in Nigeria. And so uh, let's just see how it goes. Stone has given his stamp of approval that it is going to work. It will happen. Well, let's take a look at uh, the other uh, two fixtures. Very briefly. Now, Ooh. Equatorial Guinea versus Guinea. That's a tricky one, Ooh. honestly. I think that both sides really kind of like have a dwindling mm. through these games and then they come to face each other. But I think that I'm, 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 I'm tipping it to Guinea. Because Equatorial I've, Guinea. Yeah, because Very I, well. they, I mean, they've been good. Very well. Now, let's come to Egypt and DR Congo. Egypt survived the group stage, and uh, they are here. DR Congo are here as well. This is where experience come into, comes into play. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, Egypt have done it many times. Uh, I don't think they are scared of DR Congo. DR Congo, very exciting team, very, you know, run around everything. And, like and, and Mo Salah wants to, you know, return. Yeah. If everything goes... He, that's what I'm saying. If, already, <laughs> I mean, they have been reports that they've, been, they've slaughtered some ships or something that's to it, prevent mm. the Egyptians from, I mean... Picking up more injuries. So yeah. It tells you how determined they are. The, the, the whole the whole thing is, is is set up in such a way that they, they are ready. So I, I'm I'm thinking this match that Egypt goes through. I mean, yeah. Congo, wonderful. You've done well. You've uh, you've entertained us. We've, <laughs> we've, we've, you. we've enjoyed you. Thank you very much for what you've Congo. done. But this you, is you where have you have any friends in Congo. Uh, no, no, no. They are not going to serve you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, thanks so much. It's been wonderful. Uh, this weekend show is going to be. A cracker. And I can't wait for Monday because Monday yeah. we'll have so much. First of all, we'd have to hold Stone to his words. And we're hoping, I mean, Ghana and Nigeria are brothers, you know, yes. so we'll yes. see how it goes. We're yes. hoping it goes well. Uh, it's a tough one for me personally because, you know, yeah, <laughs> Rigobert is my man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
All right, all right. So thank you all so much. Thanks to Samia Moisi. Thanks so much to Stone. And thanks to all of you for watching from different parts of the world. We'll be back on Monday to bring you another AFCON today. In the meantime, you stay well and always catch this show on Joy Sports, or sorry, on Joy uh, News, on Joy Prime, and also on Joy 99.7 FM. My name is Nathaniel Atta, and I have love for sport.